the partially frozen Des Moines River here where the Tier Pro Swim Series has landed. You're watching Deck Pass Live presented by Xfinity. Hi everybody, I'm Jeff Cummings and I'm joined by my co-host, three-time Olympian Carolyn Joyce. Kara, we're on the second full day of competition. Yesterday was electric, today was a nice setup. We had some some really, a, a lot of great 50s, some 200s, 400 IMs. It's a nice, nice little mix for everybody to watch today. Oh yeah, I think especially even the 200 stroke people love these 50s. Yes. Like throwing a 50 fly, throwing a 50 breast, like it's, it's a good time. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's much easier and it's kind of like a day off if, because yeah. the 50s were not, you know, the United States doesn't really specialize in them. So it's nice to just kind of take a break and, you know, just kind of relax and say it's just a 50. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, we want to also talk about one of the things that's really important throughout this whole Tier Pro Swim Series. It's the swim squads. These are four teams that are being kind of like fantasy swimming teams. And the point totals are going to be added up throughout each meet. And the top team at the end of the Tier Pro Swim Series gets $10,000 to their charity. So you see the four captains there. We got Camille Adams, Connor Yeager, Maya Dorado, and Elizabeth Beisel. And right now it's still pretty tight after just a day and a half of racing. Camille Adams still has the lead, nine points over Connor Yeager. And I'm really excited about the way, the, how closely bunched these teams are. Because last year, it was kind of right from the get-go. Jason Lezak, we kind of made Ran jokes away. about this all the time. <laughs> he was so far behind, he wasn't even in the running. But um, Lenny Kraselberg took a big lead, and, and, and a lot of these athletes were really kind of really invested in this and I think they are this year as well. Oh yeah, I think they really get into it and it's cool because it divides them into different teams than, you know, their typical college or club right. training team. So, it gives them a little sense of camaraderie amongst the national team. Right. So, you definitely want to keep track of these swim squad point totals. And one thing that we're going to actually have tonight only on Deck Pass Live is the 200 mixed medley relay. It'll be divided with the swim squads and the swim squad teams will be racing for pride. It'll just be a nice little exhibition race for the, the spectators here who get to see some Olympians and world champions just racing for fun. And uh, we're going to have one of those captains, Camille Adams, here tomorrow, so you definitely don't want to miss that. So let's just talk a little bit real quick about some of the races from last night. We talked about it on um, Thursday night show about the men's hunter breast. We mm -hmm. talked about that great hunter freestyle from Caleb Dressel. And you also talked about Kathleen Baker's 100 breaths as being your <laughs> highlight, which I agree with. Uh, but that men's 400 freestyle, really exciting race between two guys. And it really, again, like the 1500 came down to the final 50, and it came down to Zane Grothy and Anton Ibsen. Ibsen was the winner of the 1500. Zane Grothy, a rising star in the men's 400 internationally. He was on the 2017 World Championship team, made the finals in the former freestyle in Budapest in 2017. I know he's really looking forward to doing that in Korea this summer. And here we are going into the final 50. You have Anton Ibsen in lane three, third from the top, and Zane Grothy in the lead there, fourth from the top. And what I found very interesting, Kara, is that Zane Grothy usually goes in kind of like a windmill style freestyle in his last 50, but he didn't do that here. I'm wondering if he was trying to work on some new strategy. Yeah, he looks really relaxed here, kind of like his classic mile stroke. But um, you know, Anton <laughs> riding that lane line, trying to get every every inch from his uh, from his draft there. But I think these guys actually really enjoy going head to head. It's good for both of them. Yeah, I think they really enjoyed that over the course of the pro swim series, and that's a great time for Zane. Three forty nine in March. I think oh, yeah. he's got to feel really happy about that. Um, and he's gone through a lot of hard training over up at Indiana. I know he's the, the team there has been having some really, really intense swimming. And I'm really impressed with that 349. Anytime he can get under 350 in season, it's a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> so something else that he was very, he was really working for, not just the 400, but he was trying to work towards some goals that he has been having over his entire career. And he actually accomplished it yesterday. So if any of you follow Zane on Twitter, you might know this. So um, his goal was to be... Um, under 50 seconds in the 100 meter freestyle, under 150 in the 200 freestyle, under 350 in the 400 freestyle, under 750 in the 800, and 1450 in the mile. And yesterday he finally did that in Thursday's prelims with that 49, 89, 85 in the 100 freestyle. Those other times he had done earlier in his career, um, I remember he did that 743.7 in Pan Packs mm -hmm. last summer, a really fantastic swim. So he wrote on Twitter that was kind of a historic milestone, and it really was. There, there, I, that's very hard to do when you're a distant swimmer. Oh, yeah. I, and I think of all those times, um, probably the one that's got the smallest amount of guys is under 1450 in the mile. Yes, yes. And only six Americans have gone under 1450 in the mile. So um, 
So Zane isn't the first person to do it. So I'm going to put you on the spot here, Kara, <laughs> and see if you know who the first person was to do all those swims, all, make all those goals. Jeff, you know swimming trivia is my love language. <laughs> all right. So this is, this is going to be pretty easy for you. So um, you got any, any ideas? You need any hints? I think I know who it is because I think I swam with him. Um, I think I was on three Olympic teams You with were him. on three Olympic teams with I him. I think we hail from the same state. You do. The great state of Michigan. Yes. And I'm going to guess Peter Vanderkay. That is correct. Yes. Peter Vanderkay <laughs> was the first swimmer to do it. It kind of did it quietly. This was back yeah. in the age when Twitter wasn't a big thing. So, you know, you don't make these big announcements. But to be the be an, uh, the first American to join her all those swims, it's pretty big. Like I said, when you're, not, when you're either a sprinter or a distance swimmer, it's really hard. But I think it works out for people like Zane and Peter because they're kind of middle distance swimmers. Yep. They really, they made their names in like the 400 meter, or the 500 yard swims. And so they can kind of go up to the mile mm -hmm. and down to the hundred. So it worked out really well for them. So <laughs> two Americans have done it. I, I think the gauntlet has been thrown down Absolutely. for other people to do it. I do want to really quickly say that Connor Yeager almost did it. I think he was 50.7 in the 100 in his career. So he did all the others, but he didn't do the 100. Connor, so you still have time, buddy. If you want come to out of retirement, just yeah. go under 50 in the 100 free. You don't have to train really just hard train for that. Just train sprint. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So congratulations to Zane for that. I know that's a big milestone. I know you're really happy for that. So um, we talk a lot about uh, how we're trying to get diversity and inclusion in the pool, trying to get the faces of the swimmers that we see on the national team, junior national team, sectionals, all these areas of swimming. We try to get the faces to be a little more diverse, but USA Swimming does a lot of work to make that happen also at the USA Swimming headquarters, and we'll find out more about that now. Diversity and inclusion is important at USA Swimming because for myself personally, it has given me everything in my life. So from being a swimmer at a very young age, to swimming in high school, through college, it's been able to give me the experience that I've always wanted to come back and give back to the sport. I've been a coach, I'm now a parent of an athlete, and I get to work for USA Swimming to be able to give these great opportunities to anyone and everyone that is interested. What I hope that people take away with today is that diversity and inclusion is all of us that it takes each of us to do our part, to be aware, to be a little bit more cognizant, to be more inclusive in the environments that we create in order for our workplace to be the place we want it to be. And we're back here at the Wellmark YMCA. Uh, prelims have been over for a little while. We're kind of in that quiet phase. Everybody's back at their hotels taking that well-deserved nap. I always love those naps between sessions. Really cool. And just right behind me, you see some swimmers in the pool. Rowdy Gaines is actually hosting a clinic for master swimmers and age group swimmers. Really good for Rowdy to be able to give back to the sport and for all those swimmers to be soaking up all that knowledge that Rowdy is giving. So. One of the swimmers that is very, very great to see on deck, every time I see him on deck, I'm really, I get a big smile when I see him, is Tom Shields. He is just, for the past 10 years, he's been one of the leading figures in butterfly freestyle. And when he's, on, when he's off the, out of the pool, he's always got some conventional wisdom to portray, to convey to us. And Carolyn got to speak to him a little bit earlier. Tom, thanks for joining of us. Of course. Yeah, it's going to be great to me. catch up with you. Yeah. yeah. So tell us, how's training going? How's everything going? Uh, we're March, 15 months before trial. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's actually going really well. Um, I just put in like a pretty voluminous camp uh, with my buddy Chad Leclo, um in Turkey. And then the Cal guys are moving really well. So it's been fun to kind of train with them and get beat up um, <laughs> as they get ready for into it. That's awesome. I mean, you're 27 years old now mm -hmm. training with the college guys. I'm sure they give you a run for your money on <laughs> yeah, a daily yeah, yeah. basis. No, it's been great. Um, those guys uh, can all move. And the cool thing about being at Cal now is that, um, you know, obviously not everyone can be at their best every day, but usually someone is um, yeah. with the amount of guys that we have moving now. So it's just been a really good environment to uh, kind of test the metal in. Yeah, absolutely. So you have Pan Ams coming up this mm -hmm. summer. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I know that, you know, it's not world championships, but I honestly think there's something to be said for flying a little bit under the radar mm -hmm. in the year before the Olympics. Yeah, I think the Pan Ams team lot four years ago was pretty successful. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the plan Nathan and I are <laughs> going to be on. He gets to go to Worlds and uh, do Relays, and, you know, that's awesome. And uh, we're super supportive and happy for that team. But, um, yeah, I'm kind of stoked. Like, I got both of my events, the 100 and 200, which um, – Again, for me, I think it couldn't be you know better, and so I'd prefer that, and so that's what I keep telling myself. <laughs> well, I'm excited for you. <laughs> yeah. So you have been around for a really long time. I think your first national team was 2011 mm -hmm. World Championships. No, no Wugs. 
Oh, was. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. got it. And you're still the short course meters American mm -hmm. record holder in the 100 and 200 butterfly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had that one for a while. Well, yeah, for a little bit more yeah. here. We'll see how long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So swimming at a meet like this, you know, there's mm -hmm. kids of all ages. You're racing against 16 year olds. You know, mm -hmm. you're 27. There's some guys older than you. What would you? What advice would you give to like a younger Tom Shields? Um, same advice I'm trying to give to myself right now <laughs> is that if you uh, if you uh, um, do really bad here, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> usually how my my spring swimming goes but um yeah same thing like you know some guys uh really like the fire here and swim some well in season and some guys don't and that's just the way it goes and um you know normally these meets tend to be pretty painful for me and um a lot of people tend to count me out throughout the whole spring and um and it's like my ninth year it's like i think i'm gonna be somewhere where i've been <laughs> all nine years you're almost a decade <laughs> yeah, in yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, awesome. So we're excited to follow you for the next 15 months, and mm. um, we definitely wish you the best at Pan Ams this summer, and give your best to your give our best to your wife Gianna. Mm, yeah, of course. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. So there's Rowdy Gaines leading his swimmers through that clink. Looks like a little Tarzan, Tarzan swimming drill. there. Yeah, very familiar. That's with that one. very very helpful. I think a lot of these athletes are really learning a lot from it. I, it's it's priceless. You can't really put a price on learning from a three-time Olympic gold medalist. I see you up here itching to be <laughs> participating in that before the <laughs> Before the show started, I was trying to soak up a little bit of knowledge. You know, I'm not I'm not really a freestyler, so you know, anything that he can give me would be great because I could use all the tips I could use for my freestyle. <laughs> it's really great to have, again, to be able to give back to this, this community because I've, I've, we've talked about this. I mean, it's really great that Iowa gets to have this kind of meet, this big, inter, this big national level meet. And we talked to some of the kids just around the They're deck. They're wide-eyed. They it's, just love it. I yeah. mean, that they get to see Caleb Dressel that close to yeah. them. And I, I'm sure that, you know, this is something they're never going to forget. And hopefully they'll say, you know, I want to be at a meet where I could see Caleb Dressel. Saying, Remember me when I was 13 years old and you gave me your autograph? And yeah. now I'm hoping to be on the national you team. You never with forget you. that stuff. You never forget it. It's going to be really cool to be able to, to, to be able to take those memories away. So, um, Hopefully everybody's going to be able to come. If you're in Des Moines, come to the pool tonight. It's a lot of great racing. Much warmer in here than Much, it is out there. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! I got to tell you, I just want to say the Des Moines Skywalk. Lifesaver. A lifesaver. <laughs> it is the invention of a lifetime. I am so glad they have that. Um, but if you're not in Des Moines, you want to tune into the Olympic Channel because the racing is going to be great. You see the lineup there. We got the 200 freestyle, the 50 breaststroke, the 50 butterfly, the 200 backstroke, and the 400 individual medley um kara i kind of think the women's 200 free and the women's 200 bash are going to be the highlight races for me tonight oh yeah the big races for sure um i know the women's 200 free is loaded with a bunch of olympians in that a final yeah. um leah smith leading the way you have olivia no oh, i'm sorry not olivia <laughs> um, allison schmidt allison schmidt Haley flickener Haley Flick. melanie margalis these are yeah. ladies that could be on the four by 200 freestyle relay world championship so oh, yeah many of them I, have been and i think that's going to be kind of a good test for them to really see what they could do and then that women's 200 backstroke kathleen baker who has really come into her own in the long course 200 backstroke you know who i love seeing in the tuner back is Haley flickener yeah i i love that she has no fear in throwing in you know distance events here and there she has a great 400 free she's yeah. threw down a great 200 back this morning but she's our you know best 200 flyer that we have and and she has no fear adding these other events into her roster i have to say if you could do the 200 fly i think any other 200 <laughs> is pretty much cake See, i actually <laughs> thought tuner back was the hardest event <laughs> really I, I think it's okay i don't i i, I guess it depends on your mindset about i've never done a tuner butterfly <laughs> Oh my so, gosh. According to me, tune her back. I think we might have to put Carol <laughs> no, 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 no. in an event Retired. here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so just, just, I said it was the Olympic Channel. I want to correct that. It's actually going to be NBCSN tonight live. Rowdy Gaines is going to be um, analyzing that. You don't want to miss it. And then as soon as it's over, we're going to be here on Deck Pass Live again. We are going to be the only place you could see the 200 mixed medley relay. So as soon as the men's 400 IM is over, you want to come to us on usaswimming.org, watch the 200 Mixed Medley Relay. We're also going to talk to a couple swimmers that are probably going to be on that Mixed Medley Relay, Nick Fink and Kathleen Baker. So we're going to talk to them about after the race. I know they're going to be a little heavy with the breathing, but they're got, they're always great to talk to anyway. It's only a 50. Yeah, it's only a 50. I think they can handle it. It's the last race of the night. I think they're going to have a lot of fun. So please come and join us for tonight's Deck Pass Live presented by Xfinity. Rowdy Gaines will be there. He's gonna obviously he needs be to a rest little. Up after this. He's got yeah. He's gonna rest up. He'll be a little drier. He won't have the goggles on, but um, he'll definitely be giving you some good insight. And uh, thanks everybody, and we will see you tonight.